Indians never had to do anything with world wars. It was a war started by European countries, but India was under British rule, and that's why Indian soldiers had to participate in world wars, which resulted in lakhs of Indian soldiers losing their lives. But for some strange reason, no one ever talked about their sacrifice, and even now, very few people know about India's contribution to world wars and how that contribution shaped Indian independence movement. So, hi guys, this is Pratik, and you are watching Eclectic. World War I started because of the local war between Austria, Hungary and Serbia in 1914. This local war later threatened neighboring countries like France, Germany and Russia. As the war became more disastrous and threatening to other countries, more countries jumped into battle for supporting their allies. Totally 32 countries fought in World War I, which resulted in deaths of 37 million people across the world. In one group, there were Germany, Austria, Hungary, Ottoman Empire and Bulgaria. While on the other hand, there were allied powers like France, British, Russia, Serbia, Japan, Italy, America and China. You will not find India's name on this list because India was under the British rule so Indians fought alongside British army. British Empire built an army of Indians and named it Indian Expeditionary Force. They gathered around 1.5 million Indian men belonging to various regions and castes from regions of Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu and Bihar. This force was further divided into seven divisions. Some divisions of Indian army were sent to Western Front to fight against German Empire. Remaining were sent to Egypt and Gallipoli, and near about 7 lakh soldiers served in Mesopotamia against Ottoman Empire. Other than this contribution, India also provided 1.7 lakh animals and a huge amount as a loan to British government, which is equivalent of about 2 billion pounds of today. This is how Dr. Shashi Tharoor explains India's contribution to World War I. Let me take World War I as a, as a very concrete example. since. The first speaker, Mr. Lee, suggested these things couldn't be quantified. Well, let me quantify World War I for you. Again, I'm sorry, from an Indian perspective, others have spoken of other countries. One-sixth of all the British forces that fought on the war were Indian. 54,000 Indians actually lost their lives in that war. 65,000 were wounded. Another 4,000 remained missing or in prison. Indian taxpayers had to cough up 100 million pounds in that time's money. India supplied 70 million rounds of ammunition, 600,000 rifles and machine guns, 42 million garments were stitched and sent out of India, and 1.3 million Indian personnel served in this war. I know all this because, of course, the, the, the commemoration of the centenary has just taken place. But not just that, India had to supply 173,000 animals, 370 million tons of supplies, and in the end, the total value of everything that was taken out of India. India and India, by the way, suffering from recession at that time and poverty and hunger was in today's money, eight billion pounds. You want quantification? It's available. While talking about India's contribution in World War, Field Marshal Sir Cloud Achinlake once said, British could not have come through both wars if they had not had the support of Indian Army. So now let us talk about how World War influenced Indian nationalism. In the 20th century, India was divided into two ideologies. There were two groups of nationalists. These both nationalist groups had considerable differences regarding ethics, ideologies, fundamentals, and most importantly, these groups had different views on how India can be an independent country. How can that be achieved? On one side, some leaders believed in non-violence and diplomacy. They believed in diplomatic ways for asking the freedom of India from the British crown. For example, the Indian National Congress. On the other hand, there were revolutionaries like Chandrasekhar Azad, Bhagat Singh and Subhash Chandra Bose, who believed that India does not need to ask for the freedom. It is India's right and could be taken by force if Britishers don't leave India immediately. Regardless of their differences in opinions, these both groups have played an essential role in Indian independence movement. World War I started in 1914, and immediately after that, in 1915, Mahatma Gandhi came back to India. He brought a reputation of the nationalist and social activist with him, because he helped black people in Africa. Gandhi encouraged Indian soldiers to fight alongside British Army, so that Indians could learn about the defense system and army tactics. However, many Indians, including Subhash Chandra Bose, did not like Mahatma Gandhi's decision 
टू सेंड इंडियन सोल्जर्स टू वॉर नेताजी सुभाष चंद्र बोस एंड अदर रिवोल्यूशनरीज डिड नॉट लाइक द आइडिया ऑफ इंडियन सोल्जर्स फाइटिंग एंड सेक्रीफाइसिंग देयर ओन लाइफ फॉर ब्रिटिश एम्पायर दे बिलीव दैट इंडियन शुड फाइट फॉर इंडियाज इंडिपेंडेंस रेदर दैन फाइटिंग इन वर्ल्ड वॉर विच हैज नथिंग टू डू विद इंडियंस सो लेट सी हाउ दिस बोथ ग्रुप्स इवॉल्व ड्यूरिंग एंड आफ्टर द वर्ल्ड वॉर वन इट ऑल स्टार्टेड विद अ न्यूज आर्टिकल इंग्लैंड नीड इज इंडियाज अपॉर्चुनिटी रिटर्न बाय एनी बेज एंड एज एन एडिटर ऑफ न्यू इंडिया न्यूज पेपर शी क्रिटिसाइज ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट इन हर आर्टिकल्स एंड कॉल फॉर सेल्फ रूल ऑन द अदर हैंड गदर संगठना केम इन टू द पिक्चर फाउंडिंग मेंबर्स ऑफ गदर पार्टी वेर मोस्टली इंडियन इमिग्रेंट्स सेटल्ड इन कंट्रीज लाइक कैनेडा एंड यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स गदर मीन्स रिबेलियन अ रिबेलियन अगेंस्ट ब्रिटिश रूल दे स्टार्टेड डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिंग द फ्री न्यूज पेपर विच हैड अ टैग लाइन अंग्रेजी राज का दुश्मन मीन्स द एनिमी ऑफ ब्रिटिश रूल दे ओपनली पब्लिश आर्टिकल्स टू इनिशिएट रिबेलियन इन इंडिया अगेंस्ट ब्रिटिश रूल वंस दे पब्लिश एन आर्टिकल विच हैड अ टाइटल वॉन्टेड इंडियन सोल्जर्स अगेंस्ट ब्रिटिश रूल मेनी यूथ एक्टिविस्ट फ्रॉम इंडिया ज्वाइन द गदर पार्टी गदर एक्टिविस्ट वेर इन्वॉल्व इन मेनी बॉम्बिंग्स ऑन गवर्नमेंट प्रॉपर्टीज वाइल गदर पार्टी वॉज ओपनली यूजिंग वॉयलेंस अगेंस्ट ब्रिटिश महात्मा गांधी केम बैक टू इंडिया इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टीन एंड ज्वाइन द इंडियन नेशनल कांग्रेस अ ग्रुप ऑफ लिबरल्स मॉडरेटर्स एंड डिप्लोमैट्स ही स्टार्टेड प्रीचिंग अहिंसा मीन्स नॉन वायलेंस ही इंट्रोड्यूस इंडियंस टू न्यू वे ऑफ रिबेलिंग अगेंस्ट ब्रिटिशर्स In the beginning Indian National Congress was only interested in dominion status in simple words the Indian National Congress demanded self government by Indian leaders under the British crown it was more like semi independence for india where india would be recognized as an autonomous community within the british empire however revolutionaries like bhagat singh subhash chandra bose chandrashekhar azad and gadar party opposed this idea they wanted full freedom for india they wanted britishers to leave india in immediate effect India is going to be free. Our struggle is no doubt a non-violent struggle, but even a non-violent struggle demands an army, an organization, and a machinery. In 1916, Lokmanya Tilak, a member of Indian National Congress since 1890. completed his jail sentence of 6 years on sedition charges he was imprisoned because he defended revolutionaries through his newspaper kesari prafull chaki and khudiram bos were those two bengali revolutionaries who threw bombs on the carriage at muzaffarpur to kill a british magistrate douglas kingsford after this incident tilak defended these two revolutionaries through his newspaper the court found lokmanya tilak guilty of sedition charges and sentenced him to 6 years in jail after rejoining congress in 1916 lokmanya tilak tried hard to convince mahatma gandhi to leave the idea of total non violence and try to get self rule self rule was all about demanding british crown to leave india in immediate effect a full 100% independence to indian people in spite of tilak's request mahatma gandhi refused to leave his diplomacy behind and help british government in recruiting indians in the army for fighting in world war 1 Gandhi ji demanded dominion status in return of this help so disappointed tilak after years of trying to get independence to india by diplomatic ways under national congress he joined hands with ani bejan and g s ghorpade to form all india home rule league in 1916 this home rule movement played a significant role in setting up a stage for upcoming indian independence movement which would change the fate of indian people this movement spread out and reached to interior villages of india this movement played an important role in unification of national congress led by Gandhi and Muslim League led by Muhammad Ali Jinnah for the next 2 years this movement made a quite an impact on Indians unfortunately as the year 1918 ended home rule movement of diplomats as well as violent movements carried out by Gadar party saw a sharp decline on 11 November 1818 world war was over central powers like germany austria hungary bulgaria and ottoman empire were defeated by allied powers a group of more than 15 countries india was the part of allied powers because the british empire was in allied powers the war formally ended on 28th june 1919 by signing the treaty of versailles germany accepted to pay war reparations according to this treaty this treaty placed a heavy burden on germany and the german people as their economy was already weak because of this war as the war ended british crown became more focused on their indian territory british started repressing and crushing movements led by both diplomats and revolutionaries they arrested important leaders of gadar party in a series of raids they tricked diplomats of national congress by giving false promises of social reforms they forced prominent activists into exile to foreign countries like canada and united states as a result the gadar party dissolved in 1919 
Yet Gadar Party set the stage for coming days of independence movement. Because of Gadar Party now Indian nationalists were spread across foreign countries like China, Japan, Canada, Mexico, Thailand, Philippines and Malaya. This activist would lend their support in the coming days of Indian nationalism after 1920. After a year of promising social reforms the British Crown still was not showing any interest in making social reforms in India. They even broke their promise made to Gandhi ji and National Congress of giving India a dominion status in return of India's help in World War 1. 1919 a year which witnessed a series of unfortunate events in india this year shook indians to their core events happened in this year enraged indians and it resulted in split of indian national congress let us see what those events were to crush rebellions in india british crown was considering imposing rowlatt act in india an act which was all about destruction of indian activist and community this act gave the right to police to search places without warrants arrest any person on basis of mere suspicion people who got arrested could not even get their fundamental right of defending themselves in court police even killed many people by using this act as an excuse rowlatt act is also known as black act in indian history before the implementation of this act in february 1919 gandhi ji warned british voice royal of india that if british were to pass this act he will appeal indians to start civil disobedience even many revolutionary stated that india would not stay quiet if they passed this act still arrogant and insensitive british government passed this act on 10th march 1919 without even consulting indian leaders the act was passed india was enraged mahatma gandhi started civil disobedience movement just after 20 days of british passing this act on 13 march 1919 Civil disobedience movement also known as the non cooperation movement was a non violent way of showing anger against the government Gandhi ji believed that the british are ruling india just because of the cooperation or help they get from indians that is why he asked all indians not to obey any orders given from british officials he also asked indians not to buy any goods or clothes manufactured by british which would hurt their monopoly in india billions of people came forward and participated in this movement Indians stopped joining British military and schools as well as denied buying or wearing English clothes the success of this revolt was the total shock to british authorities british did every possible thing to crush this movement and ended up arresting mahatma gandhi on 9th of april 1919 the british even went further and arrested more regional leaders people of india protested peacefully against this arrest and then british did the unthinkable a massacre of innocent indian children women and men an act of cruelty which was criticized all over the world one order by colonel regional dyer 1650 rounds of bullets fired and more than 1000 unarmed indians dead on 13th april 1919 amritsar punjab at public garden jallianwala bagh the civilians had assembled to condemn the arrest of national leaders it was the baisakhi festival of sikh community children women and elders were present at jallianwala bagh on the mere suspicion of possible rebellion colonel regional dyer gave orders to open fire at people until they ran out of bullets there was blood everywhere soldiers did not even provide medical aid to wounded and injured even after this notorious act of british government mahatma gandhi in his first response after this incident criticized his own people he said our people did not use non violence properly but when he investigated more about the massacre mahatma gandhi was devastated england is so powerful its army and its navy all its modern weapons but when a great power like that strikes defenseless people it shows its brutality its own weakness especially when those people do not strike back he realized for first time in his life that british government would never give indian people equal rights in society and then mahatma gandhi started asking for swaraj means full independence mahatma gandhi further intensified non cooperation movement but after 1922 non cooperation movement saw a considerable decline mahatma gandhi was arrested on 10th of march 1922 on the sedition charges british crown sentenced him to 6 years in jail india's dream of independence once again crumbled down after witnessing all these incidents indians understood one thing that non violence is not the only way to tackle the british government Therefore after the year 1922 India saw the rise of revolutionaries like Bhagat Singh Chandrasekhar Azad and Subhash Chandra Bose in second part we will see how India's crumbling independence movement saw a light of hope 
with increasing activities of revolutionaries like Chandrasekhar Azad, Bhagat Singh and Subhash Chandra Bose. In coming years, Indian National Congress was about to see a split due to the ideological differences. Check out the collection of books listed below in description to better understand the history of India. Thank you all very much. See you soon. See you.